democracy. Well, um, in my political philosophy class, there is an illusion demonstrated that democracy is very far in the political evolutionary ch chain. We go, we read all of our books in the order of Hobbes, Locke, Adam Smith, and Karl Marx, suggesting, I guess, that uh, communism is the most evolved of all politics. And in terms of modern history, this is chronologically true in that, I mean, these ideas came one after another in modern history, but um, democracy uh, ultimately allows for oppression, and Ben Franklin said that democracy is like two wolves and a sheep voting on what's for dinner, and people would argue, well, certainly democracy is better than a monarchy, or an oligarchy, or a theocracy, or God forbid, anarchy, but the system of government doesn't necessarily pertain to how oppressed a population is. Like, there are some monarchies that I would even have liked to live in, but um, just because the queen is nice and uh, is very involved with the people and cares for the interests of the people doesn't mean her son won't be a complete prick. Which, I guess, is a flaw of mon monarchy, not democracy. Even though we seem to have cert similar concepts like Ron, Rand, Bush, Bush. I don't... When, when people's children want to go into politics, it's uh, probably not at the interest of people, but it, the, I digress. Um, if, if five people vote between if they want pizza or hamburgers, then the consequence of that decision is much less than if one person elected by a bunch of nimrods decide war or no, no war, legal or not legal, jail or no jail, death or no death. And because, I mean, sure, that one person who voted hamburgers, like, isn't going to get a hamburger, but that doesn't, that ultimately that isn't going to affect the, their greater outcome. And, uh, even though we have a said document protecting unalienable rights, or meaning that the Intergalactic Space Federation can't take those rights away from you. We still have the opportunity to oppress people on many other different fronts that don't pertain to guns or free speech, even though those seem to be rights up for grabs now. When politicians barter human rights as to what I can do with my body on my property and what I can buy or own, then democracy becomes that evil that forced Socrates to take the hemlock. And in today's terms of our uh, dem democratic republic, and I'm talking about America, I'm an American, um, we see that even the majority are underrepresented. And this gets allotted through uh, the special interests that affect our republic, that affect our democracy. So I guess what we really could call it is, I don't know, we live in a corporate socialist society? I don't, I don't know, I'm not going to even try to define this because it's labeling and it's pointless. But, uh, yeah, when even the majority are up, underrepresented, then you know your democracy is screwed. The, the majority says that I can have a husband. The majority says that I can smoke weed. The majority says that I can blow my face off with a gun. But, well, not suicide. I mean, well, okay, sorry to all you gun owners out there. But it says that I can have a gun. 
but the minority of those in power only care about the power and fail miserably to represent the majority and much less the oppressed minority um, theoretically democratic decisions can be a good thing but when the out well a good thing when the outcome won't have people killed or imprisoned but the bigger the power of that democracy or any government for that matter the more likely that you will see oppression and abuse and uh, side effects of government